because that's where we gather truth. You have a valid opinion, I do, you do, and you do. And collectively we can sit and we can sift through it. And if that, if that conversation gets initiated by my work of art, I'm as pleased as punch. If I put a work up and nobody talks to me about it, then I've failed. And I think that's a shift from most of the 20th century, the way artists approached work. I think I, I probably have been misspeaking. I don't know what era we're in and now. We're certainly not postmodern. We're maybe post-post. What are we? I don't know. But anyway, there is an emerging um, consciousness and sensitivity to the audience on the part of artists particularly artists who want to deal with content and spirituality and the search for truth in their work. And they are more than happy to be a part of that conversation. And I think most of them would suggest what I'm suggesting, that we don't own the meaning of our work. That it is a collective meaning that we arrive at. Yeah. Did that sort of answer any questions? Thank you. So often I feel like I don't own my sermon either. Um, <laughs> because I, I think that we attempt to do the same thing as preachers, to creatively express what the word says to us in a hope that it will speak through us to the people. But I guess I've gotten enough of my ego out of the way that it's okay if someone interprets something I said as something I didn't intend to say. I'm presuming the same thing happens with art. I'm not an artist, although um, I have great admiration for artists. But how do you respond um, as preacher or artist, and I could ask the whole group, I suppose, when the message that you convey is not at all the message that is received. I, 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 <laughs> you're right. You made a great statement. <laughs> um, your first reaction is to go, no, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute. Um, but that's ego. If I don't own the piece because I'm a worker on the cathedral and there's truth in my work, if there's truth in what that person interpreted as, what's the problem with that? I think the, the problem comes, I, I think that's the way many artists are beginning to move. I, think, I see there's a current light there. But you know what? That's radically different than the preaching I grew up with, and it's radically different than the artists I grew up with. And so I think we can't just assume that our congregations are going to listen to our sermons and ask questions. This culture doesn't ask a lot of questions, right? We're lazy. So I think we have to tell them it's okay if you look at my work. It, don't be intimidated by it. You don't have to come up with exactly the same meaning that I have intended in that piece. There's a, in, trying not to be pretentious here, but there's, there's, there's richness in the work, in your words, in your sermon, that can have all kinds of meanings. Words are ambiguous. It's like peeling an onion. I go, I get the first part, and I dig a little deeper, and I get the next layer, and the next layer, and the next layer. And you know what? Pretty soon you got a really, really rich conversation going, which is much richer than probably you intended in the sermon and I intended in my work. And, that, and that's the community conversation that seems to me that we've been neglecting. Pastors are supposed to know the truth, right? What the heck is that? You're just human. Now, that doesn't mean that you don't promote a viewpoint. You're supposed to be passionate. That's what they want from you. But 
you don't have to be foreclosed in your words. And you can invite, and, and we, this may take artists and, and, and pastors and preachers actually saying the words instead of assuming that they will do this. You are required to ask questions about my sermon. I will not tell you the way it is. 